And yes, they will, um, you know, in some cases they will stumble, um, but know that it will not be the end of the world as we all know it. Um, they're resilient. And I think you can rest assured that you have raised them well um, to be responsible adults. And yes, I often say they're adults, but we also know that there's students who are going through the different phases of development. So this piece about the transition and how we learn to let go um, and help them be all that they can be together is gonna be an important, important message that I will continue to convey throughout this evening uh, time with you. So those are my starting points. We know you have a lot of questions and we're gonna to try to go through as many questions as possible. And I, am, I, and I wanna to introduce to you uh, sort of what I call the MC for the evening, uh, Karen Casella. Karen is our Associate Director for Family um, and Parent Engagement. And many of you have had um, you know, exchanges with Karen. Um, she helps us with the newsletter, uh, with the parents' Facebook page and a lot of things. And so a very valuable and important member of our team as well. And so with that, I'm gonna stop um, and I'm gonna turn it over to Lisa Freeman to kind of give the lay of the land, um, given that your students are in, our, in the residence halls. Thank you, Dr. Ah. Um, as Dr. Ah said, it certainly is good to be together, to see you virtually. I know we all are used to this type of communication uh, and certainly hopeful that we will soon see us be able to do more face-to-face -face in person when it's safe to do so. Uh, but again, my name is Lisa Freeman. I'm the Director of Residence Life. Um, my portfolio, what I oversee, is basically the residential experience that students have um, with the hope of trying to create the best possible one for students, whether they're in their first year transitioning to campus or in their last year. Um, my team is comprised of both professional and student staff. We have close to normally when we were, would be an academic year, close to 100 RAs, resident assistants, which are student leaders. Um, we have community directors, which are master's level professionals that live in the residence halls. And then I have a leadership team. Uh, in addition to that, we oversee the residential community desk. So every community has a 24 hour, seven days a week operation while the university is in um, desk, residential desk that's there to emphasize safety, but also to provide information and guidance for students and families uh, as they visit or, or are coming to the residence halls. So Dr. Al did a wonderful job talking about the transition and the transition is certainly unique for us this year because the transition is not happening in August, it's happening in March. Uh, and I've worked on a college campus now for 17 years and this is the first time in those 17 years that we are transitioning students in March. And so we've had to do a lot of thought about how do we um, create the best, most impactful experience for students knowing that they're coming to us in what would be considered the non-traditional uh, calendar year. Um, we have RAs, then you'll meet Dean uh, a little bit later, uh, that we've hired specifically to support the mid-semester residential experience with 14. Um, we also have our professional staff that live in the residence halls that have been working hard and diligently and thinking about how do we help students knowing that there is a transition period that students, particularly first students, are going to go through. Um, Dr. All referenced the six weeks. And that six weeks, we see a lot of things come up. We see homesickness. We see uncertainty about, am I right for being away from my family? Uh, is this the right university for me? There's a host of experiences that are not specific to AU, but that first year students across the country are going to experience. There's no way around that. And my team is here to provide um, somewhat of that support as that transition is occurring. But what's different about this year than any other year is that we are still not negotiating being in a pandemic. Um, and so at the forefront of what we're doing, the focus is health and safety. We want everybody in the community, whether it's a resident, faculty or staff to be safe. And so we've had to adapt and modify some of the ways we engage. Now, the hope is as we are getting into the next few weeks and it gets warmer and we are providing the guidance from both the university as well as DC, that we can start to see more opportunities for our face-to-face -face engagement. But we have had to make some modifications to ensure the safety of both the students as well as um, our team. But now having said that, we're here. Um, similar to us jumping on a virtual call, we are using creative ways to connect and engage. 
Um, our RAs were here to welcome you as you came to the to as you moved in on any given day over a 10, 10 day period. Um, the RAs have just recently hosted their mandatory floor meeting that was virtual to both talk about what does it mean for us as a community to come together and to, to connect, but also to think about ways we can uh, emphasize health and safety. Um, there also were many um, get to know you socials that the RA hosted. So there'll be lots of opportunities for engagement, but we are having to do those um, differently. Um, it may not be the most ideal, but we want it to be optimal in the sense that we want people to make connections. We don't believe that the only way you can connect is face-to-face. -face. There's a lot of different ways people are connecting. Uh, similar to what Dr. All described, that we've got people on this call that are likely across the country and world, but yet we can still connect. Uh, and so we will do our best to, to make those connections uh, with our students, both some of it will be in person, but some of that will be virtual. Uh, we're also working with our colleagues across the um, campus life, as well as the university, to plan program events. Just today, there was a open panel discussion on what's open on campus, because it's important for students to know what's happening and what's open on campus. Our orientation team, are, they're planning uh, campus tours so that students can acclimate themselves to AU. Um, my team is looking at doing a, a cherry blossom event where we can safely transition students uh, to downtown to, to, to participate in what is one of the signature events in DC, uh, the beautiful cherry blossom. So there's a, there's a lot of opportunities to make the connection. Um, the students just got here though. Uh, we just finished moving and now we want students to, to unpack and to get themselves acclimated knowing that they transitioned while they were in the middle of class. That's another unique part of the transition for students. But what I want to say to you and continues to emphasize is that we are here for you, that we are a partner in this with you. And we want to encourage you to encourage your child um, to take that first step. Um, we have RAs that are here to help bring the community together, but sometimes the informal ways of connecting happen because you decide to go to the lounge to watch TV or you're cooking in the kitchen and you meet someone else that may also be cooking in the kitchen. Um, so it's a shared partnership. We're excited to get to know each and every student that's here, um, but we want you to know we are here to help facilitate whatever we can, however we can, and as often as we can, um, where there may be a need. So I will stop there because I can continue to talk, but I also wanna give the opportunity for some of my colleagues to also share. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa. Um, and I think um, two things I want to just reaffirm from what Lisa talked about, and then I want to pass it on to the students, um, Emily and Dean, to kind of add to the student piece of this and the residential experience, because I think you have important voices to bring to this. Two things that Lisa mentioned that I think are very important. We have spent quite a lot of time thinking about health and safety. Because we read the papers, we all see what's happening there. And I know that there's a lot of eagerness and I could see from the questions about how do we build community? How do we build community? How do we build community? And there's two things that Lisa said that I think are incredibly important now, and I think they're worth repeating. Informal ways are very important. We can certainly try to social engineering, engineer relationships, but we know the most, um, what I would say, authentic relationship and lasting relationships are the ones that are forged in informal ways. And so, yes, it is part of our role to create the environment, but it's really important for our students to be able to take the first step and sometimes the second step. And the other thing is they need time. We need to give them time to breathe and time to get to know the campus a little bit. And so I know that there's a lot of eagerness to want to get that done, but they've just gotten here. They need to even know where they're going. And I'm on campus almost every day and I run into students. I introduce myself. I try to find out who they are. And they just need time to even just know the ecology of the place that they're in. And so please, as I say to parents, let's be patient and let's understand the steps that are part of that. The second thing is we knew in students coming, even though the testing has been done before and we knew they were coming, part of that is also ramp up slowly. When we go too fast, again, what we don't want are seeing so many students in isolation because the time that they're spending in isolation is time that they're not spending with each other. So I cannot emphasize enough that there's rhyme and reason to the way in which we're trying to do things. And it is quite intentional on our part. And yes, I see them walking in pods. 
that's important. Um, are there things that our RHA are doing? Absolutely. If they're putting together things that are face-to-face -face, and I want them to talk a little bit about that. Are there things that our RAs are thinking about? Absolutely, but they just got here. And for some, you'll say, well, they didn't just get here. They've been here 10 days. Believe me, 10 days is not that long. So I think I'm gonna say to everyone, let's take a deep breath and let's all work with this and know that we are looking into all of these things. We didn't just bring them on campus for eight weeks to be in their rooms. That is not the plan. So rest assured that that is not the plan. And so with that, I wanna turn it over to Emily and Dean to, to talk a little bit about it from the student experience. Hi everyone. I'm Emily, I'm the current president of RHA, and I'm here today to just tell you guys a little bit about what's happening with RHA events so far and what we're going to continue to do for the rest of the MSRE. So, so far, um, some of you may have actually seen us out on the LA Quad when you guys were moving in, we were handing out the RHA blankets, getting to know you guys, talking to some of the students and stuff. And we did that um, the past two weekends, and then we had a pop-up yesterday where we continued to give out blankets. And on top of that, we have a paint and sip night coming up that we'll be hosting over Zoom. So basically this is a little, get a little tiles, like bathroom tiles almost, and some paint supplies. And then we're gonna have a little Zoom call and we're all gonna paint together and have some juice boxes. It'll be nice, great way to get to know some people and stuff and get a little creative. And also on top of that, we have um, the new Disney Plus show that's coming out, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We will be having um, live viewings at the amphitheater for that each week, except for the first week that it's released. It will be the second week and we'll watch the first two episodes. But we'll be doing that every week. It's a nice way to get outside, experience the campus. The amphitheater is definitely my favorite place on campus to go and chill and enjoy spring and get out of the rooms off of Zoom calls and everything. And if I can take a little look at my calendar and make sure I'm not missing anything. Oh yes, we had um, we had a social media event that we just concluded called Do You Have an Eagle Eye? Where students went around campus and followed our clues to get experience with the campus and also Tenley Town. And we sent in pic they sent in pictures and we picked winners out of all of them. The concluding winner got uh, an Alexa dot, I believe. And so it was very cool. We had some submissions. It was nice getting to see the students around campus. And we also have a programming committee that and a general assembly committee that is meeting Monday nights at 8 p.m. where we're just kind of going to see what the students want to see for more events on campus and help them get involved with planning the events on campus since they are living on campus. And as um, was mentioned earlier, I'm not on campus. My vice presidents are living in apartments in D.C. So we're not fully experiencing the MSRE. So we want to know what the students want to see happening and I'm missing something. I'm missing something for you guys, I think. And then, of course, we have once that goes on, we want to get them um, joined in. We are going to have elections running for next year so that way we can continue with the RHA in future years. So this is a great way for your students not to just to get involved this MSRE, but for future semesters, too. And I'm going to pass it on to Dean for the RA side. Thanks, Emily. Hi, everyone. My name is Dean Lefebvre, and I am Zooming in with you tonight from Let's Hall uh, from my dorm. It has been great getting to meet everyone in person and over Zoom. Uh, it's been really great to hear their uh, hopes and challenges, and I've been having a really good time getting to meet everybody so far. Um, I'm very excited to be here and I've had a great past 10 days um, and I look forward to continue to helping everybody out. Thank you. Thank you, Dean and Emily. Um, and, you know, there were lots of questions about uh, what is planned? What are you doing? Um, and first, let's start with food. We know food is important, right? Food builds community. And it's important in terms of nourishment. And we know you have a lot of questions about that. So I'm going to pass it on to my colleague, um, Anne Marie Powell, to speak a little bit about the, the food element of this. Yeah. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, I want to talk about the dining program and what we've been doing. And, uh, you know, as we as mentioned by Dr. Ah and also by uh, Lisa Freeman, that we are in that beginning stages. And as we talked about in our webinar in February, once students got here, we would be assessing and looking at our program and looking at our hours of operation. What do we have to offer? So when students first got here, 
when we first opened up on the 7th, we had the TDR to go. We've been able to look at that and each day as it opens, as we've been getting more and more students on, looking at how it works. Again, as was mentioned, is the health and safety. It, just like we have health and safety in our resident halls, we also have to do the same thing in terms of our uh, food service and how many people we can have working behind the counter, what is the safe distance of their working behind that counter. So taking all of that in consideration, we have to go by the guidelines of DC and making sure that we're keeping the workers safe too and having the spread out of what we do. Uh, with, so, you know, taking into consideration all of those pieces as afterwards on the 14th of, of March, we opened up two more locations so that we were able to, besides having the TDR to go, we did something that was very popular with our students normally is our walk and assert bird so they could get burgers, they could get chicken fingers, French fries, give them a variety there. And we also opened up our convenience store on our East Campus that allowed students to go buy things for their resident hall if they wanna take things back, uh, grab and go items, and to get a personalized size pizza. All of this has been working through our mobile app. And this app we tested, we were, we've had this app running and our student run coffee locations on campus since March. And it's ran perfect, you know, but it's a little bit different. I'm doing coffee and maybe a muffin and it's really easy and simple. Now we started adding a lot of varieties, changing menus, changing times. And I, to be honest, it's been a little challenging. We're working on that, working on how do we fix it. Uh, we've been on the call with our vendor, looking at it, talking to other schools who had the app before us or are using it, but we're moving in that direction. Um, you know, we are working on by Sunday, there'll be another change. Uh, we sit out there with the students at night. So, and I, and I want to make parents be assured that if the app doesn't work for a student, no student is going to go without a meal. They can go up to a counter. Every one of our counters has a list of every student that's on a meal plan. And if the student goes up, shows their ID card, they look them up by name and match them and they order, place their order, even at our TDR to go. And so we're, we're working out those glitches. We're we're of the app, we're also reassessing what are the hours. I've heard, I've heard, saw the, the request about additional hours for um, TDR to go. And I've been here almost every night assessing. I've taken myself on the other side and been the person putting the orders together, watching how it works, what kind of things happen with it. I am truly an advocate for the students. That is my role here, to make sure that we are doing the right thing for the students with our dining provider who provides the service for our dining program. So I, you know, students have, I was here tonight, students are knocking on the door. I have a problem with the app. I walk them through the, how to get past our glitch for right now. Oh, okay. Um, our office here, we have an office in the Mary Graydon Center, which is the one card and dining office. The staff here is available Monday through Friday uh, from nine in the morning till five at night. And we've had these last few weeks, this last week, we've had somebody here every night to look, to be helping students with the, with the dinner because I look at the counts every day. I know every location, what, who, how many people are ordering, what does it look like? And we see that dinner is really big. I mean, I think um, breakfast, we're lucky between eight to nine if we have five people that order breakfast. So it tells me that a lot of people are sleeping in, their classes haven't started. And you know, this is a period for us to look and assess. Um, I welcome any questions from parents, uh, you know, those who have written to me, I provided you with my cell phone number for you or your child to reach out to me, which this is what we're here. I'm here to be your advocate and we are going to get through those glitches, get it so that we are, the app is working the way it should, looking at the menu options, find, you know, trying to find out like, our previous groups of students loved mac and cheese. So we make mac and cheese available every day at lunch and dinner. It's always there. Now we may learn that our new students coming in are not big mac and cheese lovers. They may have something else that they're like, which we will be making those adjustments for our, our menu as we move forward. But just know that we are here to help you. Thank you, Anne-Marie, thank you. Um, I wanna kind of step back and give kind of a bigger picture of the semester 
what can you expect, but also what is our vision for the semester? I think that's important to go there. So um, as we said, you know, uh, we wanted the first two weeks to be a breather space. We want our students to get to know their new adopted home, to get to know the campus, and frankly, to get to know each other. Um, and the other thing that I remind families all the time, it's not about how many friends they've made. If you make one friend that is a friend of, that is where there's quality relationship, that matters tremendously. And I remind students all the time, when I'm in conversations with them, I keep reminding them, it's really about the nature um, of the friendships that you're, that you're building. And that's important. Because sometimes students will say, well, this person has so many friends and I only have this. And I'm like, is this someone who's a really good friend? That's important. So first is really just getting them, to, for them to get to know each other, to get to know their residence hall, to get to know the campus, that's important. And also because again, I wanna make sure people understand we're still in classes and I have to keep reminding us of that. Our students are still in classes and the classes are virtual. So we want that transition to come together fully between the classes, the new residence hall, the floor, the hall, the campus, the whole thing. It's a lot of things all at once and we wanna make sure people have time to absorb that. And as Emily said, you know, movie nights that are coming up that are in person, uh, we've opened up space on campus and we've had those spaces open in the fall and we continue to open more and more spaces. Like for example, our gym, we've increased the hours of operation so students can go and get some exercise. Movement is good for you, it's important. By the same token, we have study spaces where students can go in groups, they can go by themselves or they can go in groups of two or three and they sign up. So we have about 19 rooms that are on campus specifically for that purpose. Our student-run cafes, we have two of them, the Davenport Lounge and the Bridge Cafe are now running. And where again, there's pickup and contactless, thanks to Anne Murray and her team. So we have those things that are operating and that are there. The library is another part of that. Um, so we have those areas that have been open. The goal is then to add surely some additional events and programs. Our Center for Community Engagement and Service is putting together an Explore DC program that is a two-part. And we call it Beyond the Monuments and Museum. Get to know Washington, DC. Then they're also going to involve some of our alums who are in the nonprofit world, coming and talking to students about what's happening in DC, what are the critical issues. Those would be things that are face-to-face. -face. We will continue to build more opportunities for students to meet in smaller programs, et cetera. So to say that there'll be more face-to-face -face programs coming on, and then frankly also our Case Spiritual Life Center, our chaplains are putting together times to be able to meet with students so that students within various religious groups can have an opportunity to meet with our various chaplains who are uh, putting together some programs within our Case Spiritual Life Center. So I say these to say, we have our classes, we have the residential experience, thanks to our RAs, our community directors, our residence hall association. We have the team on campus that runs across, including our colleagues in academic affairs, that are all looking to figure out how to do some programming, how to do it safely, but how to best leverage the campus and what we have both on campus and off campus. So those things will be coming and we will continue to notify students um, as these programs come up and how we continue to make sure that they have access to the range of programs that are there. That's, I think that's an important part of the experience, but I'll tell you the most significant part of the experience is just connecting with other people. Just being able to sit on that quad and be able to talk to two other folks and just be able to have that time becomes an incredibly important part of it in addition to the range of programming. And yes, our student organizations will continue to program. Kennedy Political Union will continue to bring in the speakers. I already got the list of speakers for March and April and they're continuing down that road. Um, so we will continue to have those kinds of engagement as we move forward. There was also another question, it was about health and safety. And I wanna speak very quickly about that because those are things we can always send to you. And I don't wanna to spend too much of our time on some of what I call the nitty gritty of things, but you know, it goes without saying testing twice a week, PCR testing, we've been doing that. Students have been wonderful about you know, going and get their test done. They've been very good about you know, masking, physical distancing. Um, we see our students as responsible folks who take this seriously. They care about the community. Um, and people are doing all the things that we believe are important as we move forward um, on the health and safety side. And so we continue to look for that. Uh, you know, we know that in the country, there's a potential for surge coming. And so we are preparing for what does that look like? And we wanna to continue to work in partnerships with our students 
about how we need to all continue to do the things that we know work well um, and are important. So we can give a lot more information around health and safety, but you know, I'll see if Karen has some specific questions and we're gonna to turn to some of your questions. Thanks so much, Fonta. And I am really loving uh, the, the chat feature right now, families. It's so great to hear from so many of you and from so many familiar families. Um, I'm loving this. So I won't call people out by name, but uh, I will say to this group that a number of families have been chiming in to say that their student had maybe a rough first day, maybe they're a little anxious at the, at the initial start of this, but now they're really sort of hitting their stride and feeling like AU is home. And that's just so great to hear. So thank you families for sharing that. Um, one of the questions that came up and Lisa, maybe you can speak to this is, you know, how are students getting this information about these opportunities? I think this is one of the big disconnects because you and I both know we're, we're doing all these things and, and, but the, the students are not necessarily sure how to get the information. And then they're certainly not necessarily sharing all that with their families. Sure. So it's funny that, that you asked that question because I realized I forgot to mention that every Tuesday, um, the community directors that oversee the residence hall where, where your loved one is staying submits uh, what we call Tuesday Newsday. Uh, and it's a basically a newsletter that is a little bit of education and information and happenings. What's happening in the residence halls, what's happening on campus, or even some events that are happening within DC. Um, it's a collection of what we are doing in terms of residence life programming, but it's also campus life programming and some of the partnerships that we've created. Um, and as well as like RHA and the, the paint and see, the sip and paint that, that Emily talked about. So every Tuesday, they're getting a newsletter with detailed information. In addition to that, the RAs are a great resource um, that they can stop by their room or they can send them a message, email to ask them well, what are some events happening. RAs are gonna be planning their own um, events on their floors as in addition to some of the community events that will be hosted um, as well. So Tuesday, Newsday, um, you can also um, email the community director. The community director is, is maybe, might not be the, the first thing that a student wants to do, but they are a great resource. They are drawn to work on a college campus and work in student development because of the work that we know um, that we, the impact that we can have on students and their experience as they're making their transition. So please encourage your loved one to reach out, but that Tuesday Newsday is the best vehicle for information as well as stopping by the community desk because you can also get information there as well. The other thing uh, I want to say also is that there's the bulletin boards that the RAs put together in sure. the residence hall, right? That is also another way for getting information and all of that. And then we have a social media. Um, you know, I'm not of that social media generation, but I've had to learn. My team keeps reminding me of being with the time. So I'm, I'm learning as we go. But whether, you know, it's the Instagram posting or the Twitter posting and so forth. So we try to amplify through all different ways and different venues um, of getting information out to, to students as well. And we also know that some of what's happening and it's pretty normal, they're overwhelmed. And so sometimes families, when you hear from your students, well, we didn't know and we don't know, part of it is they're a little bit overwhelmed and that's understandable. And also another part of it is that in some cases, students are very different. In some cases, they're not really looking for all these programs. They're just looking to connect with someone at this point. And so sometimes I know, sometimes students will say, well, we had no idea they need the time to digest. They need to, the time to figure out when it's gonna be the right time for them. And so there's some of that as well, but we certainly welcome other suggestions for how we can get the information out. But I know one of the things that the team have looked at is how do we amplify this? We know that doing it one way is not enough. We have to have it replicated in all different format, right? From the newsletter to the bulletin board, to the social media, to table tents, to word of mouth. Inf you know, We know the influences, all of that we know are important for getting the communication and the information out. And if the student is, is for some reason not getting that newsletter, they should check their spam or you should make sure that they didn't unenroll so that they weren't receiving that email because that could be another reason they're not receiving that. Excellent, thank you so much. I'm posting some stuff up in the chat because a lot of the questions are coming in and I think that a lot of families will be interested in the answers. So I'm trying to keep up with it. While I'm typing, Emily, if I can ask you to tell folks how their students might be able to connect with one of those fabulous RHA blankets at this point, and how would they find out about the calendar of events? 
All right. So the blankets, we definitely have so many, so many. So we would love to give more out. Um, I know Fanta got one and she said she loved it. They're so soft, but um, we did tabling the past two weekends and one yesterday. And since it seems a lot of people still really want the blankets, I will talk to my team about maybe getting some more tabling set up through the rest of the semester for it. But um, I think that's the we're going to get that set up. We'll get that set up for you guys. So that way we can get the blankets out more. That's the only way I could think of getting it off the top of my head, unless you somehow find Katie Fultz on campus and track her down and are like, give me blanket. <laughs> but um, for the calendar of events, I think the best way to find um, our events, and I'm going to actually put this in the chat so you guys can all see it but this is our instagram username and that is definitely the way that we post the most of our events we put up flyers for it that's where all our social media events are run so if you go on and if you look at our recent posts you'll see all the do you have an eagle eye from the previous week so that's definitely the best way to do it and we'll have like me and my team we are always reposting what's posted on the american rha and stuff and then the tuesday news day we are trying we try to get all of our events as they're coming up put out on that um, I think we've stayed mostly on top of that so far. We definitely put out the link for our GA meeting and our programming committee on there. And yeah, I think those are the two ways. I'm gonna definitely get more tabling set up for blankets since everyone loves them so much. That makes me so happy. Um, and can I, can I just emphasize something Emily said? They're hosting general assembly meetings. That's a great opportunity for not only students to make connections, but to get involved and to really influence what type of experience that they can have in the residence hall. So you, they get to put forth ideas about programming. Uh, RHA is, is probably one of the best uh, partners in programming that I've ever had. And, and Emily is, was even before we had all the details for MSRA, she was looking for ways to get involved. So get involved, your, your child may be the future RHA president. So, or future RA, shameless plug looking for students that want to be excited about the, the residential experience and living on campus. And those are the ways to, to take that step and to make those connections. And um, there were also some questions I saw, Karen, um, in the questions that have come in, you know, about will there be opportunities for students maybe to meet with some program? Um, yes, the academic side is looking at that. Um, again, we wanted to make sure the first 10 days went the way they needed to. Um, now we're in conversations around some of the programmatic pieces that are face-to-face -face, um, with programs and with uh, some of the faculty, some of the uh, program directors, et cetera. So there'll be more of those coming and outreach will be made. Um, and in addition to, I mentioned the gym and some of the, the things that are there, you know, intramurals, there's lots of these different things that we're looking at that are all outdoors, um, but also that are really try to bring people together around common interests, right? not necessarily just academic interests, but just common interests, social interests, areas of interest, et cetera. So we will be definitely looking at those and exploring those as we move forward. Um, and you just need to go to the Bridge Cafe to see students there every time, right? Um, those are open, um, it's open pretty much all day. And I can tell you, I was stopped there many times and I walk all the buildings and all our campus. And I can tell you, I'm seeing students in small groups and not everybody socializes the same way. And not every student has to be the rah-rah student. I keep saying this, not every student is that, and that's okay. That's perfectly okay. Um, we wanna be able to you know, figure out how do we, in many ways, engage the different styles and the different approaches. For some students, they're much more introvert, and that is perfectly understandable, and, and it's good. Um, they, in that case, just wanna be able to sit down with one other person and engage in that way. Um, so we are looking at all those different approaches um, and ways that we can engage students as we move forward uh, during the next couple of weeks. Um, and Karen, other questions, and then I want to get to Skylar just to kind of remind. Oh me sure, there are many, and I'll but I'm going to select a few because I'm trying to respond to folks in the. First of all, families, can you see this? Like you're getting me all teary with your comments. I'm so glad your students are here and I'm so glad that so many of them are having such a great time. And Fanta and I are both alums, so we we feel it hard. Um, Fanta, can you speak just for a minute about some of the other rec spaces that are open? And I know that you have been working with other campus partners to envision some, uh, some more activities for our students as the weather warms. Yeah, no, there are. 
Um, you know, one of the things I talked about is, you know, more making sure the jogging area is open, making sure we're looking at things that are intramural and rec and rec and fitness. We're also bringing back some of the um, classes that are sort of group classes, um, that are exercise classes. So those will be forthcoming, um, and those are coming up, um, and they will be and will be making a, a major social media sort of push of that of those information, Karen where we have brought back some of our instructors uh, for different kind of classes, whether it's the Zumba, or whatever, which one is, it is, et cetera. So we're working on those things as we speak. And then the other piece that we also you know, look to is, we wanna also encourage our students to come up with ideas. Because I think parents, this is the other thing in families, a lot of times, you know, some of the questions that come is, what are you all doing? What are you all doing to create uh, opportunities for students? What are you doing to, to, to have students come together, et cetera? One of the things I've learned in my 30 years of working with students, our students are now without ideas. And many times as I found out, they actually have much better ideas than I do because they know their generation and they know what appeals to their peers, et cetera. So we are inviting our students to give us ideas, including your students who are here. Give us some ideas. Uh, we are all ears. Um, and again, as RJ said, they're programming, but we wanna hear some of their ideas. They may have some really creative ideas and we're open to those ideas and those suggestions as well. So we invite that because sometimes we can come up with what we think is the best idea and it may miss the boat because it's not what students really want to do. So I always, and this is something Lisa and her team are very in tune with is, we want to make sure we're putting together things that are meaningful and that work. And the way we do that is in partnership with our students. This is why we have our RAs who are in the halls because they know what students are looking for. They know how to communicate effectively with students around these pieces. Um, you know, so I keep inviting people. This is a partnership. It is not only about what are we doing, it's what are we doing together. And in some cases, how are students finding their ways? That's an important part of the learning. It's an important part of the growth as well. Um, and I have 100% confidence in our students to know how to problem solve, to know how to figure these things out. I have seen it again and again and have every reason to believe that I know they can and I know they will. All right, I'm gonna jump back in here. Dean, I'm gonna to turn to you for a second because I think we need some advice. So we've got some families with some sort of introverted eagles who are feeling a little shy and reticent about how to make friends. What tips do you offer? Like what, what should a parent be be saying to their student right now who's saying I don't know how to make friends and Dean let me let me specify that I think that there's a there's a feeling that some students already sort of made some networks before they came to campus whether it was through class or through living together downtown in the hotels or whatnot so so how do we advise students to kind of make the connections Yeah, thank you, Karen. That's a really good question. And I think I would start off by saying that there's a transition period uh, of just like a couple of days that I think everybody just needs to take. I know even me, even myself, I had to take that for my first couple of days when I was here. Um, and, you know, it's okay to get homesick for a day or burnt out. I mean, we're doing this right in the middle of midterms and classes, so it could be very stressful. And just being able to, you know, first tell your student to take time for themselves, just to relax, just to do something that they love, whether that be watch Netflix or read a book or just take a walk. DC is a beautiful place to take a walk. I think that's the first step. Um, but for being social, I have to say that one thing that I've noticed about everybody I've met is how friendly everyone is and um, accepting of new people. Whether it doesn't have to be anything very difficult, it could literally just be sitting in the lounge and eating or sitting in the lounge just watching TV and someone new comes in, you just say, hi, where, where are you from? And that could be the start of something new. Um, and yeah, it is a little bit more difficult over Zoom, but I would encourage my residents that if they're ever feeling that way, that they could reach out to me either through a message or through knocking on my door. Um, I'm totally okay with talking to them and uh, you know, making them feel comfortable. One thing I just wanna emphasize is that RAs are there just primarily as a resource, um, whether your student wants to interact a lot with other people or not very much at all, 
either is fine. Everybody is different. And, um, you know, introverts as well as extroverts, I believe actually can make really great pairs of friends <laughs> from what I found uh, it, through my experience being the RA. The other thing too is all RAs have a general postings board that will be putting up events. I know I'm planning a joint event with the floor above me, uh, let's six. Uh, and so we're getting really excited for that. We might be planning some sort of grab and go or like reverse trick or treat style between the floors where we either um, we buy food. So, you know, obviously we're COVID conscious uh, and, you know, pass it out or we're going to plan some sort of outdoor event. Um, we are thinking about this. And the cool thing is through social media, a lot of it is easier. Um, but yeah, like I said, I, I just want to emphasize that the possibilities, even though we're only here for a few, uh, really a couple months, the possibilities to, for meeting new people are endless and everybody, um, you know, generally is more friendly and opening than sometimes you'd, you'd think. So that's how I would answer that. Thank you so much, Karen. Um, Karen, I want to go back to Anne-Marie because there were lots of questions around dining, um, including Eagle Box and vendors and things like that. So Anne-Marie, if you can maybe speak to that, I know you spoke briefly about the fact that you're opening up more options so that there's diversification of food. There were also questions around nutrition and things like that. So if you might be able to speak to some of that, that would be helpful. Okay. Anta, I didn't hear your last piece of questions around. Nutrition, nutrition was one of the other things that okay. there was questions about nutrition. And so if you could maybe speak to that as well. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so, you know, Austin's meal plans came with the $400 in Eagle Bucks that was part of the meal plan. Those Eagle Bucks are used for a variety of things. And when we think, look at it from dining point of view, we have a host of dining locations available for off, off campus to, one, to be able to give students to have a taste of, new, of DC. What does DC have to offer? Um, you know, just like being at home, you don't want to eat all your meals at home, you want to go out. So this is the option of allowing students to do something else. We added, um, what we have a lot of locations in the Tenley Town. We have a Whole Foods, we have Chipotle, some of the popular ones that students have asked for within the Tenley Town area. And then we go all the way into, um, you know, we have some locations near Georgetown, some locations over in DuPont Circle. And we added recently Grubhub to our listing. And I will tell you, I have a screen that monitors everything that comes up and I see a lot of Grubhub orders that have placed. Um, and with Grubhub, we have the option, as long as the student orders from a place that has Grubhub Plus, there is no delivery charge. So if it says Grubhub Plus for that vendor, the delivery charge is waived. Now, how does that happen? They have to make sure within their Grubhub app they have added their Eagle Bucks as an account that they can use. Now, it doesn't mean they have to use Eagle Bucks all the time. Just by having that, our, our relationship, just by having that in your account, even if you're using your credit card, will waive the Grubhub Plus if you're ordering from a Grubhub Plus location. Any student that's seeing anything different, they can always reach out to the card office and we will work with Grubhub and work with you in getting that situated. But Grub, there are numerous Grubhub Plus locations in the DC area. And the nice thing about our Grubhub relationship, you can be anywhere. You don't have to necessarily be here on campus. We have people ordering in California who are home uh, all the way up to Vermont. So you can be anywhere as long as you're affiliated with American University and use that Grubhub app for your Eagle Box. We're always looking for other places to add for Eagle Box. We, we do have, I know, um, I saw a question out there about um, options available for Starbucks, wanting to know about our Starbucks on campus. Our Starbucks on campus is not offered, open during this period, but we have two Starbucks that are very close to our campus and each one of them accepts Eagle Box, which would have been the same thing that the student would have used on campus, would have been their Eagle Box. So it's a you know, still a win-win situation for a student that has to have that star couple of um, Starbucks. We, in terms of nutrition, we have a registered dietitian here on campus. She is here three days a week. Uh, students can always make an appointment to meet with them, meet with her. 
to talk about anything or if you need to talk to meet with her virtually and she's not here, she's always available to do that from a nutritional point of view to walk, help walk through any nutritional needs you have, whether they be dietary needs or looking at some religious needs. I know we have Passover coming very soon. Passover will be starting on the 27th, that evening meal. We are, we are offering to all of our students who want to keep kosher, a Passover menu for the all age days that will be breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The only thing we have to do, we have to have all students sign up for it by contacting us through meal plans at American.edu. They can contact us yeah. to register. We have to have that by Friday because we need to get the order in. We have a deadline to get it into our kosher vendor to be able to provide that to us during the Passover period that that will be available to them. Um, we will do, we will be looking at when Ramadan starts in April, what things do we need to do for Ramadan to meet the needs of our students who are uh, looking at that. So we do look at, we, we try to take into consideration all needs that are possible. I see a question about gluten-free. We offer gluten-free products. We, we have uh, a G8 station in uh, TDR to go, which is allergy friendly. And it takes into consideration all of your gluten-free options that you're looking at. We're off, we will have, um, we have gluten-free uh, grab and goes available in, for snacks in our C store. So we've tried to make sure that we're looking at, at every possible need. Are there some that maybe aren't there? If they're not, then that's where the student needs to reach out to us and we will look to see how we can make that happen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anne-Marie. Uh, is it still Sarah that they should reach out to if they've got a particular dietary concern? If I put Sarah's email address in so there? So you can put Sarah. Um, you can also, um, it is Sarah. It is still Sarah. Okay, great. I'll do that in a second. Um, and for those who are not familiar with all of AU's acronyms, TDR, is normally terrace dining room. That's typically the all you can eat buffet, uh, which we can't operate as normal this year because of our COVID restrictions. But TDR is the shorthand for that all you can eat dining. Um, there were some other families who had some, thank you, Anne Marie, who had some questions around you know, like temperature control or maintenance issues. And so perhaps this is a good time to bring in Skylar to just kind of talk about how we handle maintenance requests and when we turn over from our heating system to our cooling system. We can also, yeah, stand for sure. we'll also talk about housing and open housing for summer and fall. Yep. Yeah, I can touch on all those things really quick here. Um, so a couple of really quick resources. So um, in addition to everything you've heard, we also, our housing office is staffed with our communications team who's ready to help and answer questions. We have a really, uh, in, a really detailed, dedicated website on a number of these topics. And so I really encourage folks to, to visit American.edu backslash housing. Um, right on the announcements page, the top three things on our website are information on MRSE housing, uh, as well as just the experience and connecting to all the, all the offices on this call today, um, as well as our summer housing page, which just launched um, I think yesterday or today. So if you're looking for summer information, it's on there as well. The summer housing application uh, opens on um, the 30th. So it's coming up. Um, but our information on rates, placement, all that stuff are all on our website for the summer housing page. And then there's also the third um, piece on our announcements page is our returning room selection process, which is currently underway. And so that's our housing for fall um, of next year in the academic year. Um, if, if anybody has students that are enrolled or taking part of that returning room selection process, no, next week's a big week for folks. That's when they go in and select the spaces that they wanna live in next year. So they'll be getting emails about that in their, the, the sign up time um, and when their, their time slot is to go in and make those selections. So that'll be really important for folks uh, to have, make sure their students are keeping an eye on. Uh, and then go in and complete that last step next week. Uh, we also have on our housing um, page, we do live chats. Um, we have our communications teams that you can live chat with um, during the day, Monday through Friday. Um, so it's a great uh, resource if you just have some quick questions, uh, instead of going back and forth in email, you can live chat with us. Um, and we have our, um, our team as well answering our phones, of course. Um, to Karen's question about uh, maintenance requests, 
So we know like we have been, you know, we prepare all of our rooms. We send our staff through to do all kinds of room checks um, on a number of different pieces uh, prior to students arrive. But we know things like a light bulb, if we check it on Tuesday, the light bulb will go out on a Wednesday. And so for any kind of maintenance requests um, that have to do with the student room, the lounge, anything they're noticing in the bathrooms, all of it goes through a centralized work order system called Two Fix. And it is the letter two, F-I-X. So it's two fix at American.edu. Um, or our students can log into their um, American University portal and there's a work order uh, submission page that they can uh, search and fill out. And that's where they can put in all their contact information, the location of the issue and a description of the issue. So we have teams of folks that those tickets get dis the, um, sent out to based on area of specialty. The one exception I will say is if anybody ordered a, a rental fridge, uh, the micro fridge program through my fridge rental, if anyone has any issues with their my fridge, that is just um, an email directly to my fridge since that is a rental uh, that everybody's engaged in directly with that company. Uh, so you can get their contact information on our website, um, but that's a quick uh, message to them. Specifically, we know that uh, we had some beautiful weather, um, some early spring um, for move-in. Uh, if you're not familiar with the DMV area, we have about 12 seasons instead of four, and we're, we were currently in the, the pre-spring season, and now this week we've moved back into normal spring. Um, and so we got some beautiful weather that we know did bring some unseasonably warm temperatures. Um, we did send out an email last week to everyone that lives on campus explaining um, a little bit about that and the impact it has on our buildings. Um, it referenced how thermostats work um, and our, what Karen had referenced to our switchover process. So our campus uses a centralized heating and cooling system. And so in the winter, we push heat and in the summer, we, press, we push air conditioning. And uh, that switch only happens once in the spring and once in the fall. So when we get those kind of unstable weather conditions, which we typically get a few times in the spring and then again a few times in the fall. Um, we have to kind of just work through those a little bit until we get a consistent pattern. Because while we did have highs in the 70s last week, I think the low today or tomorrow is about 30. And so we want to make sure that we keep that heat on for these really cool days. Um, thermostats can be turned off so that there's no, no new heat being distributed to the room. And then we just ask residents to work with us on you know, opening that window for some fresh, cool air. Uh, if they are able to keep their bedroom door open to get some cross ventilation using fans, maybe not keeping their heavier comforter on, things like that. Um, but again, all the, if there's anything wrong with the room, if the thermostat's not working, if they believe there is an issue, that's just a, a two fix ticket. And if they need help with anything, we're here at housinginamerican.edu as well. And thank you, uh, Skylar, Lisa, and Marie, Dean, and Emily, and Karen. Um, I want to go back to the bigger picture. We are thrilled to see our students. We really are thrilled to see our students. Um, when I walk the campus and um, you know they introduce themselves and so forth, it's just great to have this campus alive. Um, I also have to remind all of you um, on the call, um, we have 13,000 students that we're responsible for. I'm reminded of that every day. Um, and just in the DC area right now, between on campus and off campus, there's over 6,000 students. Um, so it is a big village, as I'm often reminded. And we care about each and every one of our students and we want to see them succeed, we want to see them thrive. Um, we are here to support in every way we can. Um, but we also know that part of the time that they're here at American, and if we do our job right in partnership with you, that they will learn and grow. And sometimes it means that it's going to be bumpy. Sometimes it means that we may not get it right the first time, and they may not necessarily get it right the first time, but that is okay. The key thing is, how do we learn and how do we work together through some of those? And the other thing is, you know, sometimes I'm asked by parents, well, we're, how can we be most helpful? And I'll tell you this, the way sometimes you can be most helpful is let them figure it out. Let me say this again, please let them figure it out. Your students are incredibly bright and very capable. 
And so sometimes, you know, you may come to us with an issue, know that we will always be here to listen. We will always be here to try to figure out, you know, what's the issue. But sometimes you may hear me or members of my team say, you know what, we need to talk to your student. And it's really important that we do that. Because in doing so, we're also modeling for our students that we believe in you, we trust you. That is incredibly important for us in our relationship with our students. So I don't say that lightly, but I say it really in the spirit in which I hope you can receive that. And that is that we are here to root for the students with you. We are very committed as much as we can and we want to work with them and we want to work with you. And you know, often when I'm having these conversations, the other thing that I do is I normally have my Kleenex box with me. And part of the reason I have the Kleenex box with me is separation is hard. It really is. Um, and it's been even, I think, more challenging because this has been quite an unusual year. Whereas your student normally would have been on campus by last September, that was not the plan. And they're now on campus now and it's starting now for them. So when I talk about the six, you know, the six weeks red zone, it's that period of the honeymoon period. We know that chapter. And then we go through the period where you're going to hear from them and it's going to be very condensed because they're here for a shorter period of time. So what normally would be six weeks, I anticipate in a week or two, some of your students may say, I hate this place. And that is the transition period. It is not that things are falling apart, it's that they're going through transition. And then they begin to figure it out again. So we will be hosting more of these sessions for MSRE families. But what I just really wanted to do was just to say thank you. Thank you for the partnership. And know that Karen and all of us are here, but we want to work with your students. We want to work with you and we want to work with your students. But more than anything else, you know, President Burwell, who walks the campus every day, I hear from her almost every day, oh my goodness, the students are here because she runs into them. You know, the team that's here, you know, nonstop, whether it's our grounds people, our facilities people, and Marie, who I run into every time that I'm on campus, people are here. This campus is not empty. People have been here and they're here. And so I just want to reassure you of those things. And we're not going to get everything right. And when we don't, we will be honest about that and say, you know what, we missed the mark on this one. But we're learning and we're working on that. So we also ask you for your patience as well. But with that, I'm going to stop and just say thank you. Um, and for some of you, I'm sure we will see you in April with cherry blossom season. We will see you when you come to um, pick up your student in May. And in some cases, students are already saying to us, how can I figure out how to stay here in the summer? We will work with them on that as well. But we're really thrilled to have our students in the DMV area. We really are thrilled. And we also know that not all of our students had the opportunity to be here. And we wanna be there for them as well, wherever they are. Anything else, Karen? Dean and Emily, thank you. Thank you for everything that you do as student leaders every single day on behalf of the community. I just wanted to say that. And Lisa and the team who are literally, like I said, every day at it, along with Skylar and Anne Marie. So thank you to all, to everyone and to our parents. Please stay in touch um, and know that we will be having follow up sessions, as Karen mentioned. So this is not going to be the first and last one that you last time you'll hear from me and the rest of the team. No, and thank you, Fanta. As I've posted in the chat, if we didn't get to your question, I'm sorry, just go ahead and email me at AU Parent. I do share your questions with folks on this panel and otherwise so that we can get you your answers. And please do let me know what more you'd like to see, how we can help you help support your student through the rest of the semester. I want to thank the whole team for their uh, contributions this evening and families we're here for you so it was so fabulous to, to get to meet so many of you during move in I look forward to celebrating with you at the end of this semester and to all of our interactions in between thanks again so much for joining us
Bye-bye, everyone. Be safe.